Hello everyone! Okay, so I think we are ready to start AP problems, AP review problems, based on what we know, okay? So we can, we're gonna slowly, uh, slowly be doing AP problems, because it's almost AP week. So, this question is from both the AB and BC exams, 2009 Form B, okay? And let's read the question. Let f be a twice differentiable function. Define on the interval negative 1.2 is less than x is less than 3.2 with f, f of 1 equaling 2. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, is shown above. The graph of f prime crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 1 and x equals 3 and has a horizontal tangent at x equals 2. Let g be the function given by g of x equals e to the f e to the f of x okay a lot of information okay this is our let's start part a write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals one so the line tangent to the graph of g what is that okay so in order a so we're given that g of x equals e to the f of x power, e to the f of x. Now, the, the slope of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals negative 1 is simply g, pri g prime of negative 1. So we need to find g prime of x. And fortunately for us, this function is really easy to do with the chain rule because we know a lot of information about the graph of f. So if you can do... The derivative with respect to the inner function, we're going to define our inner function as f, f of x. So if e to the f of x times the derivative of f with respect to x, times f prime of x. So all we need to do is find g prime of negative 1. So g prime of, uh, sorry, not g prime of negative 1. Say, am I saying negative 1? It's positive 1. So g prime of 1 equals e to the f of 1. Okay, so e to the f of 1 times f prime of 1. So what is f of 1? They give us that f of 1 equals 2. Okay, so we have e squared times what is f prime of 1? f prime of 1, okay, they also give us is negative 4. Okay, you look at the graph of f prime, and we get negative 4. So we have negative 4 e squared. What we can do is use point-slope form. Okay, what is g of 1? So if x equals 1, g of 1, g of 1 equals e to the f of 1. And f of 1 is given as 2. So it's just e squared. Okay. So what we can do is use point slope form. y minus y1, y1 is e squared, it passes through e squared, times m, so negative 4 e squared, our derivative, times x minus x1. What is x1? x1 is, is 1. So we have y equals negative 4 e squared x, this becomes a positive 4e squared plus e squared is 5e squared. This is our tangent line. Okay, so um, let's go to part B. So for part B, Find all values for negative 1.2 is less than x and is less than 3.2. Find all values of x at which g has a local maximum. Justify your answer. Okay, so we're going to do our justification as it goes. Okay, I'm not going to write it, but I'm going to explain it thoroughly. Okay, so when does g have a local maximum? Okay, so we need to have a critical point first. And the critical point happens when the derivative of g is equal to 0. So g prime of x must be equal to 0. And we found g prime of x up above. 
So g prime of x equals e to the f of x times f prime of x. So we have to have e to the f of x times f prime of x equal to zero. Now, just due to the properties of exponential functions, e to the f of x can never equal zero. It approaches zero as f of x gets smaller and smaller, but never actually is zero. So all we need to worry about is points where f of prime of x equals, equals zero. And that's where negative one and three come in. Okay, because those are our prime candidates. So when we have critical points at x equals negative one and three. Now, f prime is positive to left of negative one, but it's negative all the way to three until it becomes positive again, okay? So if f prime goes from positive to negative, that's when it will have a relative maximum or local maximum. Otherwise, it will have a minimum, okay? Because f is going from increasing to decreasing, okay? If it's a maximum or it will go from decreasing to increasing if it's a minimum, which means at x equals negative one, at x equals negative one, there will be a local maximum of at g. Ooh, battery's running low. Okay, so let's go to part c. They give us that the second derivative of g is g prime prime of x equals e to the f of x times quantity times the quantity f prime of x squared plus f prime prime of x. Is g prime prime of negative one ne positive, negative, or zero? Okay, so let's just evaluate g prime prime of negative one. Okay, so if e times f of negative one, well, we don't know f of negative one, but we know it's certainly not equal to zero. So let's look here. If f of negative one, f prime of negative one squared plus f prime prime of negative one. Okay, so this is always positive. Now f prime of negative one is negative. This, no, f prime of negative one is zero, okay? Because it intersects the x-axis at x equals negative one. So that is zero. So we have a positive times zero plus f prime prime of negative one. Where is f prime prime of negative one situated at? Okay, so in other words, f prime prime of negative one is the slope of the graph at, of f prime. Because remember, the derivative of f prime of x equals f prime prime of x. So we're just literally looking at the slope of the graph at x equals negative one, which is negative. So we have zero plus a negative number. Okay, so this will this whole quantity in the brackets will be a negative. That means we'll have a positive. So we have e to the f of negative one. So we have a positive times a negative quantity. Okay, so that gets us. Okay, that gets us that g prime prime of negative one must be less than zero. Okay. So g prime prime of negative one must be less than zero. So it is negative. Okay, so let's look at the part D. Find the average rate of change of g prime, the derivative of g over the interval one comma three. So the average rate of change of not g, but g prime, okay? 
over the interval 1 comma 3. So that is equal to g prime of 3 minus g prime of 1 over 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1. Now, what is g prime of 3? g prime of 3 equals e to the e to the f of 3 times f prime of 3. Okay, we're just using our derivative from over here and transferring it here. Okay, so e to the f of 3 times f prime of 3 minus e to the f of 1 times f prime of 1. f prime of 1. All that over 2. Okay, so the average rate of change is literally the slope formula. Okay, since it's an average. Okay, you're just finding the slope of the secant line. Okay, it's an approximation. It's, it's the slope formula. Okay, in case you don't recognize it. So when they ask for average rate of change, this is what they're asking for. So if e to the f of 3 times f prime, and f prime of 3. So we don't know f of 3, but we know for sure that f prime of 3 is definitely, definitely, definitely equal to 0. Okay, so we know that it's equal to 0. So we have 0 minus e to the f of 1 times f prime of 1. Okay, e to the f of 1 times f prime of 1. Okay. So that equals negative 4e squared. Okay, e to the f of 1 is e squared times f of 1 is negative 4. We simply also could have used our value that we found here. So negative 4e squared over 2. Negative 4e squared over 2. Or actually it's negative negative 4e squared over 2. This is a negative value. So we get 2e squared. And that is the average rate of change. It's positive. So that is the average rate of change for f of g prime over the interval 1 comma 3. And we're done. We, we successfully completed this FRQ. Okay, we we got our all four parts, and this really has to do, again, with properties of the derivative. Okay, this heavily tests you on properties of the derivative. Thanks for watching, and how all the derivatives interplay. Thanks for watching. Make sure you comment this video, and uh, if you have any questions, like this video and pass it on. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.